All right, welcome back. We are going to do another one of these together. This is example one, two, and then it goes back to problem number one. So these are not the examples. These are the actual problems you have to do yourself. But I'm skipping to this one because the examples had all the equations written out and this one doesn't. So I want to make sure that you kind of talk through how to figure those out. So um, let's just read. The area is 600 square meters of a parking lot. Each car, so we have a car, and it requires six square meters, while a bus requires 30. So all of this is kind of about how much space there is, and there's a limit because the space has to stay less than or equal to 600 because that's all you've got. Um, an attendant can handle only 60 vehicles, so that's another constraint. That's the number of vehicles. Total has to stay less than or equal to 60. Car charges two fifty and a bus seven fifty. How many of each should be accepted to maximize income? So anything to do with money is going to go in our objective function. That's why you're going to see here the two fifty and the seven fifty down in this profit equation. So those don't go onto your graph. That's going to be what we plug it into later. So first of all, you have to do kind of reasonable domain, meaning you can't have less than nothing. So if we're gonna let X equals the number of cars and Y equals the number of buses, um, then we wanna remember that we need to have greater than or equal to zero cars and also greater than or equal to zero buses because you can't have less than none. Now, one of the things that's limited is our space. So let's write a space equation. So it says every car, which is our X, requires six square meters. So six per car, plus a bus requires 30. So 30, and then that's gonna go with Y because Y is the number of buses. And that all has to stay less than or equal to 600 because that's as much space as we have. The other thing is it says they can only have 60 vehicles. Okay, so this is gonna be the number of vehicles. So that's just straight up number of cars plus number of buses has to stay less than or equal to 60. Okay, so X and Y, these just put us into what I would call quadrant one, if you remember the quadrants from days gone by. Quadrant one is kind of that reality quadrant where you say, hey, I have to have like positive X and positive Y. So that's what this graph paper is set up to show me. So I'm really going to focus on graphing these two things. I'm going to make myself a table because that's, in my opinion, the easiest way to graph these. So I put a zero in for X. If I put a zero in for this, that X part would disappear and I'd be left with a 30 Y and a 600. And that will happen um, if Y is 20. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the opposite and put a zero in for Y, meaning let's say there's no buses, only cars. I'm like going to the two extremes. Then I'll only have six X and I'll have all 600 square feet for just cars, which would mean I would have 100 cars. So to represent like how much space I have, I'm gonna connect 0, 20 to 100, zero, knowing I have to stay below that. So that's gonna be my first restraint, is I'm gonna stay under that line, and that's the line representing how much space there is. Okay, then let's tackle this one, which is straight up how many vehicles there are. And if I made a little table for that, if there was zero X's, Y would be 60. And if there were zero Y's, X would be 60. Because you're saying, if I don't have any cars, I'll have 60 buses. If I don't have any buses, I'll have 60 cars. So I'm gonna connect 60 here to 60 here. Because if X is representing cars, this axis is the number of cars and this axis is the number of buses. So I'm gonna connect those two. And then I have to stay below, this is the number of vehicles. I have to stay below both things. So the region where I would be below both things is gonna be under here and along there. 
So this is kind of, not kind of, this is my feasible region. So if I'm going to identify my vertices, they're going to go to from here to here, here to here. And then that is the region that contains all of my options where I have enough space and I don't have too many cars. So that's my feasible region. So if this is my first vertex, that's at zero, zero. This is my second vertex over here, that's at 60, zero. And then my third vertex over here, that ones on the axes are always the easiest, is at zero, 20. And then this one, the fourth one, I can tell from my graph is at 50, 10. So it's important to do your graph right, otherwise it's going to be really hard to see what you're supposed to be getting. So one of those vertices, one, two, three, or four, is going to turn out to be the best combination for maximizing profit. So to figure out which one it is, I'm going to plug them both into this maximizing equation. So if I put 250 times nothing and then 750 times nothing, Shockingly, I'm gonna make nothing in that scenario. Here, if I have 60 cars, which are gonna net me 250, um, but I don't have any of the 750 buses, I'm gonna end up with a profit of 150. So if I have all 60 vehicles or cars. Here, if I have 250, but now in this vertex, I have zero cars. And um, for 750, I have 20 buses. So that actually is 150 as well, weird. And if I go this third route and I end up with 50 cars at 250 each, and then at 750 each, I have 10 buses, putting that through my calculator, I end up with 200. So the, the four possible solutions, obviously this one is gonna net me the most for my profit, so I make my profit statement and say, hey, a maximum income of $200 can be made with 50 cars parked and 10 buses. So definitely you have to walk through it one step at a time or it can be really overwhelming, but hopefully this will help you get through a couple on your own. Bye.